I just want to read a verse to the young people this morning. And over in Matthew chapter 14, we read in verse 27, but straightway, that means immediately, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And young people, if we were to take those words, be not afraid, and we were to add into that the words fear not in the Bible, and every equivalent in the Old and New Testament, we would discover there's 365 of them. In fact, the late Dr. Paisley said there was 366, even covering the leap year. And I want us to think this morning of those words, be not afraid. And I want to introduce you to another Mr. Men character, and his name is, you're looking at me, Mr. Jelly. Now, Mr. Jelly was the 15th book that Peter Hargraves wrote. Why Mr. Jelly? Well, of course, if you met him, he wibbled and wobbled all about like a big bowl of jelly every time he walked. So he was called Mr. Jelly. But let me tell you something else about Mr. Jelly. Mr. Jelly was frightened about everything. Do you know that he was frightened at the sound of a twig breaking beneath his feet? He was sound, uh, afraid uh, uh, at the sound of a bird call. He was afraid of even the sound of the cereal. Whenever you added the milk, remember, like Rice crispy, Snap, Crackle and Pop? He was afraid of that. He was afraid of the sight of a worm. Think of a little wiggly worm. Who would be afraid of a worm? Well, Mr. Jelly was. He was afraid of meeting anyone, especially someone who knew. He trembled. He quaked. He was even afraid of his own shadow. And oftentimes when he saw his own shadow, his knees turned to jelly. He was full of fear. He was often afraid to go out of his house, not only during the day, but especially, of course, at night. And you know, sometimes, boys and girls, in bed, this is the way Mr. Jelly went to sleep. He went to sleep with the blankets over his head because he was afraid of the dark. Do you know that one day, I should have told you, Mr. Jelly lived in the forest, in the middle of the forest, all by himself, nobody near him. And one day, whenever he was in the forest, he spied this old tramp. And this old tramp was a big, big, big man. And when he stood up from his sleep and he yawned and stretched, Mr. Jelly, who saw him, froze on the spot. And he was full of fear and he couldn't speak. He was standing with his mouth open. Then the man started to approach Mr. Jelly. Well, he couldn't move. And the man said, who are you? And then he, he muttered, I'm Mr. Jelly. And then he said, well, well, what's wrong with you? You're wobbling like a big bowl of jelly. And he said, well, I'm full of fear. And I'm even afraid of you. And the man says, well, please don't be afraid of me. I'm sorry I made you afraid. But I'm going to give you a little tip. When you're nervous and afraid and frightened at something, this is what I want you to do. I want you to count to ten. Can you do that? Mr. Jelly, yep. Well, he said, in your mind, you count one right through to ten. And then he said, perhaps what you're frightened of, you'll not be frightened of it any more. And there was a little help to overcome fear in the life of Mr. Jelly. Now, aren't there many like Mr. Jelly today on the journey of life? You see, if I said to you this morning, what are you afraid of? I think that most of us would have a fear of something, a, a phobia. People are afraid of heights, aren't they? Tall building, makes their head dizzy, couldn't look over the side. Many are afraid of dogs. The Bible says beware of dogs. I take that literally. That's my phobia. Many are afraid of the dark, like Mr. Jelly, maybe sleep with the light on or the blankets over their head. Afraid of spiders. Some people in this church wouldn't lift a spider in the kitchen. What about afraid of a mice? 
I know ladies that would scream the house down if a mouse appeared. Or a rat. Or what about afraid of getting lost? What about afraid of a tight space? Maybe stuck in a lift? And boys, the sweat glands would turn on and they would be really overcome with fear. You see, let me tell you a little story. I'll set this down for a moment. There was a minister one time on holiday. And he was away with his wife and three children. And they, on a day out, thought, we'll go explore this dark cave. And they asked this lady, who was a friend of theirs, who was blind, to come with them. And she came with her guide dog. And they left her at the mouth of the cave. And they went bravely in. And they wanted to get to the bottom of this cave or see where it ended up. And they had a torch with them. And they walked for a long, long time over puddles and rocks. And the cave was getting narrow and narrow and narrow. And eventually they got to the bottom. Now they'd been away for over an hour and maybe an hour and more. And as they turned round to look back, of course they couldn't uh, see the entrance of the cave. There was no light except the, what they had in the flashlight. And all of a sudden, as they flashed the flashlight up towards the entrance of the cave, didn't they see something coming out of the darkness? And all they could see in the torchlight was two green eyes. And as they saw the two green eyes coming toward them, this is what they did. Ah! They were afraid. And do you know what it was? It was the guide dog. The woman thought they'd gone long enough and she sent the guide dog in to get them. Well, it's not a bit like what happened to the Lord Jesus. Remember the disciples? He had went up a mountain to pray. He had sent them to the other side of the Lake of Galilee. This was about 2 a.m. in the morning. And they were in the boat. And in the boat, as they were rowing across, a big storm erupted. And the wind was very um, strong, and the waves were boisterous, and the disciples were in the boat, and they were afraid. And they're thinking, you know what? We're going to sink here. We're going to die. We're never going to make it to the other side. And then all of a sudden, as they're looking out the side of the boat, they see a person coming, walking towards them on the water. And the Bible tells us that they thought it was a ghost. And do you know what they did together? All 12 disciples. Ah! Because they thought, we're done for. But it wasn't a ghost. Do you know who it was? It was the Lord Jesus. And he said, it is I. Don't be afraid. And do you know what Peter did? Peter said, Lord, well, if it's you, I'm getting out the side of the boat. And he, of course, put his leg over the boat. I'm not attempted in case I hurt myself. But he got out the side of the boat and he began to walk in the water. And do you know what the water was like? was solid brown beneath his feet and I could just imagine the disciples watching this as Peter's walking towards the Lord Jesus and as he keeps his eyes in Christ the water below him is solid ground but you see the moment he takes his eyes off the Lord Jesus boys and girls you know what happens he began to sink the Bible says when he saw the wind and the waves boisterous he began to sink and then he cried out Lord save me I perish and the Lord Jesus took him by the hand and brought him back into the boat And the Bible says the moment they get into the boat, everything was calm. And you know, there's a lesson there. How to overcome our fears. Many of you need this wee message this morning. Don't be afraid. Because you're facing things that are causing you fear. And distress and nervousness and upset. And here's the Lord Jesus. And he's saying, here's how to overcome fear. It's faith in him. It's trusting him in every circumstance and situation in life. Doesn't the Bible tell us there to have faith in God? And the Lord Jesus is bigger than all your fears. The answer to fear is not count to ten, and hopefully it'll go away. But the answer is to have faith in the Lord Jesus. Forsaking all, I trust him. And I leave that little message with you today. Be of good cheer, it is I Be not afraid. Don't be like Mr. Jelly and be afraid of everything. You learn to put your trust in the Lord, even in the darkness and the difficulty of your situation. Now may the Lord bless you this morning. We do thank the young people and the boys and girls for being here.